Thank you. Um, I'm starting with a warming up question. Is, is the mic working? Can you try? Then you take mine. Mine is working, and I try later. Um, uh, yeah, I'm starting with a warming up question. Uh, um, the director, Brendan McDowney, he, he can't be here tonight. Uh, how did you three meet? Uh, first of all, I just want to say thank you guys for staying for the Q and A. It's really appreciated, and thank you for the applause. I hope you enjoyed it. Um, Brendan sent well the producers, one of which is here tonight, um, Connor Barry up there. Um, they sent the uh, script over to my agents and asked if I would audition, and I put an audition on tape in LA. So I had this wonderful script, and I did three scenes and recorded myself on my computer and um, sent it over. And the first time I met them was when I got to Ireland, when I was going to shoot the film, and we all had lunch together. Um, I spoke with Brendan briefly on Skype when I was in Australia once, um, when I was promoting the woman. I was going around a lot, so, yeah, that was it. Um... <clears throat> Yes, well, I met Brandon in Amsterdam, and um, he was there to um, to do several auditions. And I walked in, and uh, he said, "Well, I, I would like you to do an audition as well." And uh, I did. And then I was also in Ireland meeting Pollyanna and everybody. So he's, uh, but he's a he's a fantastic director. He knows exactly what he wants, and he always is. Well, he he. He's always looking for, for the better things or something. He's never satisfied with, with, okay, we've got it. No, he always is searching for, for better, better, better. And he knows how to tell a story. So he's, he's amazing to work with. I think it's just it's working, but not loud enough. Um, uh, yeah, the film is about a, a man obsessed with death. Uh, can you tell us a little bit about the shoot? Was it very sad, very depressing, or how, how was the mood? I think Robert should answer this one first. <laughs> well, it was... Yes, it was depressing, but it, it's... You know, it's very hard when... when you know, I'm a very sensitive guy, so, um, yeah, uh, I cry a lot. Ow, ow. <laughs> no, but I am, you know, the, 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 the emotions are very deep, you know, it, 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 they're not common emotions that, that we're playing. It's like, this guy is very lonely, he's in his house all the time, he, he, the only thing he actually sees is death, and it was very... You know, I, I, I don't think I, I was a really nice guy during the shooting, but it was really intense, but it, it, it was really a, like an experience I've never had before. And everybody, the cast, the crew, everybody was like focused on their things. And so it was really, the concentration level was really high. And the mood was also like, I was constantly like, like this, and I was in my trailer and I was, you know, in the mood of the of the film, and that was really hard because I took it home as well. My girlfriend said, "You know what the fuck is going on?" And I said, "Yeah, I don't know, I don't know." But it's I think it really worked out for the film, and I think you see it. So, but it was it was heavy to do, and also fun. And for me, when you're working with a bunch of Irish people. There's a lot of poetry and lyricism about the culture and, and the people were really fun and really wild and I had a few really great nights out, a lot of drinking, a lot of good times. Um, but that was required because like Robert says, it, you know, it's a very dark character to take on. So I was, this constant kind of, you know, idea of suicide was on my mind the whole time and the, the grief of, of my son, who of course I'd created in my head and so of course was always with me. Um, and it was a little bit lonely as well, wasn't it? Because we were in a hotel which was kind of separate from everybody else, so which I think served really well for what we were doing. Um, but yeah, it was it was a, a mixture for me of a lot of laughs and a lot of really fun, great crew to be around and a lot of silliness and then kind of taking Naomi back to the hotel with me and going, okay, here I am. Um, I, I like the location in the movie very much. Um, um, can you tell us a little bit where, you, where, where was the shoot taking place, actually? I think it was really beautiful. 
Um, I thought it was really great the way the creator looked at the film where you couldn't really tell that it, was, it wasn't site specific. So we shot in Cork in Ireland, which is beautiful, and then we shot in Luxembourg. And um, between the two, I think he really, everybody managed to make a setting that you don't feel it's about the place, it's about the characters. And um, yeah, so we had a good time there. Yeah. <laughs> It was not Disneyland or something, you know? But what really worked well, like Luxembourg, is really, like, depressing. I hope nobody's... <laughs> <laughs> no, but it's really, like, grey and there are only offices and, you know, just people working. So when, when we s stopped shooting, I wanted to go out, but there was only, like, a highway and, like, this grey... So that, that was really... It worked really well for for the, for the acting because Ireland is beautiful, you know, all the mo the mountains and the sea and the nature. It was it was like we were my hotel was like in a big forest with a golf course and it was really beautiful. But it worked really well for the for the inner inner acting. Because <laughs> it's really funny because it's like life imitating art here. Because for me, Luxembourg was beautiful. <laughs> and I went and saw castles, and I got the tour, and I went and saw caves, and it was gorgeous, and lots of, lots of um, forests as well there and stuff. So you were really into that character, dude. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's great. Um, okay, questions, comments? No? I want to thank uh, Robert because I have today a double feature with you. <laughs> First, app, app, and uh, now this movie. App, oh yeah, thank you, yeah. thank you. Thank you. Uh, yeah, app is a totally different movie. <laughs> I'm like an evil genius in, the, in app, but it was fun to do as well. Did you use the app on your yes. phone? Did it work? Yes, it did. Cool, okay, good, good, good. Yeah, well, yeah, that's something totally different. I was very happy during that shoot because I had to kill some people, so I don't <laughs> Be brave, it's okay. Maybe you can say thanks to Naomi for staying alive. Well, that's thanks to Brendan because in the book. <laughs> yeah. Can you tell us a little bit about uh, the book? I mean, it's uh, based on a, uh, a book by Ke uh, Kei Oichi, and I haven't read it. And but uh, is the adaptation quite close, or did Brendan change a lot? Or for Brendan, the focus of, of making the film, for him, the two main elements that really fascinated him and, and the reason that the novel spoke to him so much and that he wanted to make an adaptation, um, from what he tells me, is that um, he's always been interested in the idea of a monster and how, you know, on social media sites or anything on the internet, really, there's this way that people can comment and be very, um, you know, make decisions about what people are and who they are and why they're that way and all these words like, you know, revolting, disgusting, um, horrific, you know, he should be sent, killed, or whatever. People who've done major crimes, um, he's interested in taking apart the character of somebody like that and seeing the child within, and that's something that I think he did really well um, with this story. Um, so that theme was there in the novel, obviously, already, but I think Brendan changed a lot about Ian's character from the sort of psychosexual stuff. You'll see there's not a lot of necrophilia in this film, um, whereas there is quite a lot in the book. Um, and secondly, something that Brendan was talking to me about was uh, the fact that in the, in the original book, Loving the Dead, it focuses a lot more on an obsession with death rather than what Brendan takes from this story is that, you know, the world is this huge, profoundly huge place, unimaginable, um, un incomprehensible. But for him, it, being a Catholic and having a lapsed faith and now having no faith, he found the idea of not having something to believe in quite scary. But when he looked into science and Stephen Hawking's writings, he recognized that the fact that the world is that way was something actually quite comforting for him and something that made him feel, instead of very small, part of a greater, most amazing thing. And that made him feel good. So I don't think there's so much of that kind of universal element in the novel. Um, and I didn't read the book because Naomi is very brief in it and she dies and I felt that Brendan's adaptation was the true story that we were going to be making and I think if I'd read the book I probably would have been slightly put off. <laughs> yeah, I have no comment on that. No, it is absolutely true and I haven't read the book as well because I wanted to, I wanted the script to be the first thing to read and not 
I don't. I didn't want to have a judgment already because I read the book and I thought, oh, this is a story. I just wanted to read Brandon's story and play it that way. And yeah, I think it's a pity I didn't have sex more with uh, that woman. <laughs> uh, yeah. Well. That's not <laughs> But uh, uh, didn't we, uh, did we say before that uh, that there was not really a proper translation of the book yet anyway? So that's also an excuse for you that you didn't read the book. <laughs> uh, uh, no, but it's true huh? the, the, uh, that Brandon really uh, did um, uh, to need to find somebody to, to have a real translation for the book and uh, to, to make this film happening. Okay, uh, get let's the chance noch mal and the Biden uh, and. Yeah, there is also a few minutes. questions. Uh, first, why do we have prevented Ian not to take a pill when he was with the second woman in the forest? And he basically let the woman die. He, he used to take as many pills like, as, as her did, as she did. And the second question, what do you two guys think, um, Pollyanna and Robert, about this um, suicide scene in the media? Internet forum where people find people who, who die together. I mean, there was some case years ago here in Germany about the are you from South America? Uh, Mexico, North America. Oh, I'm sorry. Sorry. I can't see you so far away. <laughs> um, why doesn't he take all the pills? Um, I think he doesn't take all the pills because he doesn't want to die yet. And because he's... Um, how do you say? He's fascinated by... You know, I think she gives him something that um, he wants to live. When he's driving the car and she's singing the song, you see him smile for the first time during the film. I think he gives her, uh, no, she gives him uh, something that that makes him stop wanting to kill himself. I think he, he feels love or warmth. and But he thinks that she wants to die, so he, he's not going to... He's not going to stop that because she, he says, you wanted to die, I helped you, but I think he wasn't ready yet because he feel, felt something that felt good. And what about the, the suicides um, websites? I think, you know, it's a very difficult subject, but I think you should need a platform for, for anything to just talk about it, you know. I think there should be websites for gay people who want to come out of the closet, like, you know, what's happening in Russia right now. I think there is always, there, you know, there's very interesting discussion in, in Holland with pedophiles. There's this big website that all pedophiles can join and that's legal. And now the, the discussion is there, should we make that illegal or should we let it be legal? You know, and I think how bad how bad I think it is. You should always give people a spot where they can talk about it and not push it away in a corner like suicide. People should be able to talk about it. You know, and with all the, those other things, I, I'm not saying it, it's a good thing, but I think people should always have a spot or a place that they can go to and talk about it with other people, you know, because if you just stay in your room like Ian does in the beginning and does not do anything, you get totally blocked away from the world and I think if you talk about it you can solve your own problem maybe or you can just discuss it. I think discussion is very important but yeah to kill yourself in a group of 20 people at the same time I you know suicide is very personal and when you come into a group like that you know you group pressure also starts so if you don't want to do it, but you're in a group of 20 people and all those people are saying, no, we're going to kill ourselves today, you're coming with us, you know, it's hard to say no because you feel obligated to them to do it. So I, that's risky, but I think there should be sites where you can discuss it and you can talk about it and you can put your emotions on, just, just like a, going to a therapist or something like that. Yeah, I, I agree with what... Um I was going to call you Ian, how weird. <laughs> Good job. Um, I agree with what uh, Robert says about, you know, having the opportunity out there to talk about these things. And in general, I think all the, you know, a lot of the taboos in our society could do with a little more help. Um, I think for me, the, the 
I think about parents who've lost children and who have maybe used these sites, or teenagers, and I think, of course, they feel that they're to blame and that, you know, that they would want them shut down. Um, but I think that it's such a fast-changing society and, and technology and the internet is just sweeping us all up. And for the generation below us, it's, it's unfathomable for them that we lived in a time where it didn't exist, you know, we didn't have that, that space to go um, and, and everything at our fingertips. And I think it just brings the age-old point back even stronger, which is that people need to talk to their children about stuff and we need to have family discussions and we need that kind of sitting around the table um, thing going on more and it's something that if we it, there's even more danger in this point in our society of losing that because where you know of course you're going to go online and it's not the same as communicating face to face so I don't know that's what it brings up in my mind okay möchte jetzt jemand noch etwas sagen letzte Frage jetzt oder Kommentar hi there's there's so many actors uh, saying that they don't like to see themselves on screen um, I have a feeling you stayed inside and watched the movie. Uh, is that right? Yeah. Uh, yeah, but I was asleep. I was just gonna ask, uh, how, how do you feel about it? Do you do you watch yourself on screen, and um, how does it feel not to see yourself, but yourself working and portraying a character on screen? Um, when I was younger. Um, and when I see myself on the screen, I always hated my voice. I thought, oh my god, is that my voice? Oh, it's hideous. But now, actually, when I look back, I can, you know, I'm always, I'm, uh, how do you say it, I'm always, um, I don't think I'm good when I see myself. I think you can do better, 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 better. And now I'm, when I'm watching myself, I'm trying to learn from myself. I'm trying to look at myself and I'm trying to see like, oh yeah, I can do better there or I, I could done this like something else or I'm trying to study it. But just like an actor, I think you should go to theater or to movies just to watch, you know, my heroes on the big screen like Robert De Niro or, you know, you could just watch it and learn. And I think you can learn from yourself as well. And But I'm never satisfied. So when I'm watching there, I'm thinking, like, Jesus, you should have done this or that. But it's, you know, you do try to do the perfect thing at the time when you're shooting. But afterwards, I'm always like, next time better. <laughs> but I think it's, you know, you will always say that. I, I, you know, if you're a writer or an actor or you're a football player, you watch back your match and you say to yourself, next time, two more goals. You know? Like Raphael van der Vaart. Yeah, for me, I, I, didn't, I didn't stay and watch the film, but that's because I've seen it many, many times and I wanted to catch up with, with Connor and meet everyone from the festival and stuff. Um, so, but for me, watching it, it's the same thing. I, I learned so much from watching the film. And I'm, you know, I'm an audience member. I love to watch movies and I wouldn't do a movie if I... Well, sometimes I have. Most movies I do, I, you know, I, I really believe in them and love them, and, and everybody involved is, is exciting to see their work as well. So there's lots you can take in from the film. And the wonderful thing about promoting films at festivals that you do is you get to see it more than once, and so you get to see all these moments that you might not have caught at first, and it just, it just, it makes you understand filmmaking so much more, and it's a wonderful, rich experience for me. Watching my own performance, it doesn't, I mean, it doesn't freak me out. You know, there's sometimes you'll watch something and go, oh. But generally, I'm, I can sit back and just kind of go, oh, okay, well, that worked, or that didn't work, or, wow, oh, I know that didn't work, but the editor made it work. That's interesting. You know, so it's just, it's, it's a big collective experience for me watching a film that I've worked on. Um, I had something else to say. But, oh, yeah, I'm entirely suggestible, so I get really into the film, like, completely. So it's not really me anymore. Okay, um... Uh, lastly, Poliana was so nice to sign uh, one of uh, one Blu-ray of the woman for you, and uh, yeah, just one for you all. <laughs> and uh, uh, you you uh, can win the Blu-ray now with our uh, usual lottery. You know what I'm talking about. I'm getting it to you here and show it. Oh, the woman signed by Poliana. And the question is: Sven, du guckst aber, ja? Ja. Sven da?
Ja, gut, gut, gut. Ja. Äh, wer der Gewinner ist. Wir sehen das hier so schlecht. Ja. Uh, the question is, uh, Poliana was at the Fantasy Film Fest Nights uh, playing a role in a John Landis film. What was that? Yeah. Is he louder? Burke and Hare. that's correct. That's correct, right? Okay, so thank you. Uh, and get your Blu-ray. Thanks so much for coming. Yeah, and uh, yeah, we see you outside.